this video we're going to take a look at solving some equations and inequalities that involve having variables on both sides. This is going to throw a couple more sort of details, a little more complexity into the mix here when we do this. Uh, let's take a look at an example. So let's say we have something like 3x plus 14 is equal to uh, 5x minus uh, 18. Well, I'm going to go ahead and use my strategy here of highlighting or separating the left side from the right side. And our, our whole goal here, what we're doing is trying to solve this equation. The entire goal here is to get x on one side and get a number on the other side. So we want just a variable on one side and just a number on the other. So in solving this, that's what we need to do is uh, pick a side that we want the variable to be on and then pick a side we want the number to be on and do inverse operations to um, until that's what we have. Uh, I personally prefer having the variable on the left and the number on the right, so um, let's work on getting that variable term on the left. Now the first thing to know here is that when these two terms, 3x and 5x, they're on opposite sides, which means they cannot be combined together. So I can't take this 3x and this 5x and combine them to be 8x because they're on opposite sides. I can only combine things that are both on the left or both on the right. What I want to do is I want to eliminate the 5x from the right. I don't want any variable terms on the right, so I want to eliminate that 5x. Since it's positive 5x, I have to subtract 5x, so that will give me a 0x. But I've done that to the right side, so I also have to do that to the left side. On the left side, 3x minus 5x will be negative 2x. Nothing happened to change that plus 14, so that'll uh, get brought down. Let's bring down that equal sign. Make sure that equal sign doesn't leave from this column here. 5x minus 5x is 0x, so that's gone. It's eliminated. And nothing happened to change that minus 18, so that stays how it is. Now I have of my variable term on the left, but I have numbers over here that I don't want, so I want to get rid of this minus 14, or this plus 14, by doing the inverse and subtracting 14, because that'll give me zero. If I do that to the left side, I have to do that to the right as well. So 14 minus 14 is zero, and that's eliminated. Nothing changed about that minus 2x, so bring that down. Bring down the equal sign, negative 18 minus 14, uh, let's see, that's going to be negative 32. On the left side now, I have this negative 2x, and I don't want the negative 2 there, so I have to do the inverse. That's saying negative 2 times x, the inverse is to divide both sides, so I'm going to divide by negative 2, because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1, so I have positive 1x. Bring down that equals and negative 32 divided by 2, or negative, negative 32 divided by negative 2 is positive 16. Graphically, this is going to look like a number line that has 16 on there, and the only value that works, x is equal to just 16, so close circle on 16. So it's always a good idea to check here, so let's go ahead and check and make sure that 16 works. So we're going to take that 16 and substitute it in uh, for x on both sides. So the only thing we're doing is we are replacing the x with a value which is 16. So on the left side we have 3 times 16 plus 14. Uh, let's see, what's that going to be? 3 times 16, uh, was that 48 plus 14? On the right side 5 times 16, so that's going to be uh, 80 minus 18. Let's see, 48 plus 14 is going to be 58, 62. And 80 minus 18 is also going to be 62. So that gives us a true statement. That means that 16 is a valid solution. Now I want to take a look at a couple of special cases because when you have variables on both sides, there's something that can happen uh, where the variables get eliminated on both sides. So let's take a look at an example of, of where that happens. Um, all right, let's take a look at an equation. So let's say we have 3 times the quantity 2x minus 4 is equal to um, 3x plus 3x 
plus 10. All right, let's think about what we can do with this. The whole goal here is to solve. So we want to work on getting the variable term on one side and the number terms on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and separate my left side from my right side so I don't get mixed up. On the left side, um, I want to go ahead and distribute that. I could divide both sides by 3 because this is just 3 times something. So I could divide by 3. But the reason I'm not going to do that is because then I would divide this side by 3 and that 10 is not divisible by 3. It would give me a fraction and I don't want to deal with that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just distribute in that 3 and multiply through. 3 times 2x is 6x minus 3 times 4 is 12. On the right side, I have these two terms that are like terms, 3x and 3x. Since they're on the same side, I'm able to combine those into one term, and I have a total of 6x's on the right side. Nothing happened to that plus 10, so that's just going to stay plus 10. Now, I want to go ahead and get my variable term on the left. That's where I like my variables to be. So I don't want that 6x on the right. I want it eliminated. Since it's positive, I will need to subtract it. And since I'm subtracting it from the right, I have to subtract it from the left. On the left side, 6x minus 6x is 0x, and those are eliminated. I just have negative 12. Bring down the equals. On the right side, I have 6x minus 6x, and that gets eliminated. I have 0x, so all I have is just 10. So now I don't have a variable term at all. I just have this statement that says that negative 12 is equal to 10. And that is not true, that'll never be true. And what that indicates is that there is no real solution. And you can use this symbol for the empty set, which is a circle with a line through it, um, if you want to. It just states that there's nothing that you can use for x. And the reason is, if you take a number and substitute it in for 6x, or in for 6, or <clears throat> If you take a number and substitute it in for x, that 6x and that 6x, they're going to be the same exact value. So we're taking something minus 12. Let's do this. We have something minus 12, and that same something minus or plus 10, and we're trying to figure out what when are these going to be equal. We're taking something and subtracting 12, and taking something and adding 10, and those are going to be the same. It's not going to happen. So we have no solution. Um, there's no way that we can get a true statement out of this for any value of x. So if you get a false statement like this when your variables are eliminated, you have no real solution. Let's take a look at an inequality and one other special case. So let's say we have 2 times uh, x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 2x minus uh, 7. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use my strategy again, separate the left from the right, and see what we have to work with. Let's go ahead and distribute that 2, because that's not divisible, so I don't want to deal with fractions right now. I'm just going to distribute. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times positive 4 is 8. Bring down that greater than or equal to 2x minus 7. Now, I want to get my variable terms on the left side, so I don't want it on the right side. I don't want that 2x over there. I need to eliminate it by subtracting it away. So 2x minus 2x is 0x, and that's eliminated. I did that to the right, so I have to do that to the left. And 2x minus 2x is also 0. So that is eliminated as well. On the left side, all I have is 8. And on the right side, all I have is negative 7. So let's think about this uh, statement. I have 8 is greater than or equal to negative 7. And that's true. That is always going to be true. So what this indicates is that our solutions are all real numbers. Everything that you can think of works. 0, 1, negative 100, negative a million, pi. Any real number you can put in for x, this statement will always be true. And here's why. In this step here, we had essentially 2x plus 8 and 2x minus 7. So that was taking something plus 8 and then something minus 7. That doesn't really fit there. And this side is always going to be bigger than this side because 8 is always bigger than negative 7. So for that reason, we have all real numbers. So those are the, th the new kind of things that you need to think about um, if your variables get eliminated on both sides.
If your variables are eliminated on both sides, and what you're left with is a true statement. So for, for example, five is greater than two. That means that you have all real numbers. If you get a false statement, like seven is equal to zero, then you have no solution because those values will never be equal to each other. So there's nothing you can do. Now these special cases only occur when both of your variable terms are eliminated, like you have no variables left at all. I want to take a look at one last example here, something that gets easily confused when it comes to variables on both sides and no solution, all real numbers kind of thing. So here we have 2x plus 5 equals negative 2x plus 5. I personally like my strategy of separating the left and right, so that's gonna, what I'm going to do. Then think about what's the goal here. We want the variable terms on one side, the number terms on another side. So I like my variables on the left, so I don't want that one on the right. I want to eliminate it. It's negative 2x, so I have to add 2x. Since I'm adding that to the right, I also have to add it to the left. On the right side, negative 2x plus 2x is 0x, so that's eliminated. Now on the left side, I know a lot of students would see that and maybe cross it out thinking they're being eliminated, so it's always important to think about what is that step actually doing. So that is a positive 2x plus 2x. That's going to give me 4x on the left side. Bring down this plus 5, bring down that equal sign, and bring down that 5. Next, I don't want the numbers on the left, so I want to subtract that 5 because that's the inverse. If I do that to the left, I have to do it to the right. On the left side, 5 minus 5 is 0, so all I have is 4x. Bring down the equal sign, 5 minus 5 uh, is 0. Now, a lot of students get confused here um, and aren't sure what to write on the right side, but it's perfectly okay to have 0 as a number. There's nothing wrong with that. So I have 5 minus 5, and I just get 0 from that. Um, I know some students would maybe think we have no solution, but we do. With 0 is perfectly fine to use as a number. One last step here, we have 4 times x. The inverse is to divide both sides by 4. On the left side, 4 divided by 4 is 1x. On the right side, 0 divided by 4 is 0. And we seem to have a perfectly valid solution, just one number, 0. Let's go ahead and check. On the left side, we have 2 times 0 plus 5. On the right side, negative 2 times 0 plus 5. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5. So we have this true statement uh, that 5 equals 5, and so we have a perfectly valid solution of 0.